بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ام امارا نصيبا بنت خاب الماجيني او الانصاريا ما الله بي بليز وذ هر شي از ا يونيك اند ديفينغس بيرسوناليتي اند ا جريت موديل شي ليفز ان ذا هارتس اوف ذا مسلم لايك ا بريليانت تور وين ايفر اي تراي تو رايت اباوت هر اند كروتينايز ذا بيجز اوف هر لايف جيرني I always feel overwhelmed and a sense of humility and insignificance overcomes me. For Umm Ammara, it is with due respect and it is with due respect to and love for you that I am humbly acquainting our daughter, sisters and mother with lessons drawn from your faith, your struggle in the way of Allah and your motherliness. at a time that we are all in dire need of this lesson for this the truth have been mixed with falsehood things have been turned upside down and minds wander aimlessly so much so that we do not know how to move or where to go perhaps we will all have a resurgence that can bring us out of the abyss of loss to the peak of the freight path the path of those on whom Allah favored with his mercy. Umm Ammara had no son, whose name is Ammara, from whom her nickname is derived. It was only a nickname for which she was known. She was in the prime of her youthfulness and newly wed when she had the honor of meeting the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. in the middle of the night at the Aqaba in Mina along with a delegation of the Ansar. They all embraced Islam and she did and they swore their allegiance and she did. A sister of her known as Ummani was also with her and she also swore allegiance. Hal Waqidi narrated from Ibn Habib Sasa from Umm Ammara that she said, the men were placing their hands in the messenger of the, in the hand, the men were placing their hands in the hand of the messenger of Allah on the night of Aqaba, giving their allegiance while Abba, the Prophet's uncle was holding his hand. When it was my turn and that of my sister, Umm Mahani, my husband, Araba ibn Amr said, Messenger of Allah, here are two women who came with us to swear allegiance to you. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, I accept their allegiance upon things regarding which I accept yours. I do not shake women's hand. Articles of the Pledge of Aqaba are the first foundation upon which the great change that took place in the course of Dawah was based. These changes include moving from passive jihad to active one and from enduring persecution and remaining steadfast to waging a relentless and an uncompromising fight against politism and kufr. It is a jihad that is not restricted to the squad, the sphere and the battlefield. It is rather a jihad that includes war against all kinds of corruption and deviation and in order to build the individual and the society. Umm Ammara has been filled with the spirit of Iman and Islam since the day the first propagator, Mus'ab ibn Umair, started propagating Islam in Yathrib assiduously with a careful and objective work, cogent argument. agreeable logic and with wisdom and excellent admonition. By Allah's grace and plan, Mishab was able to turn Yathrib, Mithik, Aus and Khazraj tribe into helpers of Islam and its messenger The Prophet asked Mishab, how was Madinah when you left it? He said, I left it while there was no house in which the name of Muhammad was not being mentioned. 
it is either members of the house have all embraced islam or they were busy talking about the pure and new religion muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the topic of their meeting gathering and conversation umma amara physically and emotionally filled with faith and she traveled along with the athrib delegation to makkah to make the pledge of kaaba meeting with the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the greatest goal and the highest love so allah filled her heart and her mind with happiness and self denial in the way of responding to the call of islam those were the first influencing factors there should be no wonder then when we see humma ammara in her stance her rule and her being around the messenger of allah rising high to become a shining star who light never dies and who illumination never wither and which consistently move in its orbit there are vivid qualities in her character but the most vivid one is her fight in the way of allah more so for ibn hazr said she witnessed the pledge of akaba and she also pledged allegiance she participated in the battles of uhud hudaybia and khaybar and participated in umrah ul qada she also witnessed the conquest of makkah and participated in the campaigns of hunain and imama this means Umm Ammara witness and participated in the greatest and the most important battle her presence was distinctly recognized more than that of other women who took part in this battle this distinction presence this distinct presence as its factors and consequences let us start with the battle of uhud that took place in the month of sabar the third year of hijra this battle was named so because it took place between the muslims from the polity at the prison prison of mount hufud that lies on the northeast outskirt of madina it is the greatest mountain on the eastern part of the city umm said bin saad ibn rabi narrated that she visited umm ammara and after participation in the battle of Uhud, and she replied i went out in the forenoon with a water vessel in my hand i came to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he was with his companion and the muslims were winning the war but when the muslims were later defeated i moved to the side of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam I engaged in fighting and started protecting the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the sword while at the same time shooting arrow until I was wounded. Um Said said and I saw a deep and hollow injury in her shoulder. Um Ammar stand on the day of Uhud was well known to earlier and later generation. The people narrate to one another is they stand with pride pity and love umma ammara radiyallahu anha went to the battle of Uhud not to fight she rather went there in order to give water to the thirsty perhaps she also went there to take care of the injured she did not carry any sword bow or arrow then the unexpected happened the ark disobeyed the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by abandoning the position he commanded them to man wanting to collect booty the tide then turned against the muslim in favor of the quraysh and many older companions were martyred the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam escaped on to the top of the mountain of uhud and no one remains with him but a few companions defending him with their bodies and soul his smaller teeth were broken and he was injured in the face and his pure blood was shed it was 
then that um amara dropped her vessel of water and the zeal of her faith was filled up boiling like a cooking kettle in her feminine nature she snatched his sword from one of the escaping fighters and a bow and an arrow from another she stood firm defending the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he saw her around him in the great tense of her and her glorious defense for him he also saw the enemy of allah ibn kamiya moving closer to her so he called upon her son to protect her um amara felt this call not only with her here but with her entire being and feeling she also felt it with all her senses and from within love of iman that flourished in her heart she then said o messenger of allah invoke allah to make us your companions in paradise that was the goal she was aspiring for in this world and the hereafter she was not concerned with the safety of her body and life neither was she concerned about wealth or fame or any of the things of this world she only wanted to be among the dwellers of paradise and to be in the company of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam such is the reality of faith purity of certainty and wholesomeness of islam we are saying this as an admonition to ourselves to our families and to all those who work in the field of islamic propagation and research the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then supplicated for her saying o oh allah make them my companion in paradise um amara said after this i do not care about whatever happens the supplication of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actualized on the entire outpouring of um amara her son abdullah and habib were martyred in the way of allah allah enemy ibn thamia was able to overcome um amara He hit her neck with a sword and made her suffer a deep wound that she continued to nurse for the rest of her life until she died and met the pleasure of Allah. Umm Ammara won a medal in the Battle of Uthra. That was a source of pride for her. In spite of the severe pain she suffered, no sooner had the wound relieved her a little through treatment that it started to deteriorate anew. She also had an invocation from the mouth of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from his noble heart that served as a provision for her in the remaining year of her life and as a light throughout the darkness of night and days and with which she dispelled the darkness of even making her a radiating model umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu narrated to us from the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his noble saying whenever i turn left or right on the day of the battle of uhud i always saw her muhammara fighting in my defense Besides the medal that Umm Ammara carried since the battle of Uhud and the invocation of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made for her that Allah should make her his companion in paradise she also won a noble and high commendation by which she attained the rank of the heroic fighter in the way of Allah this was before the hijab was made obligatory and the women were commanded to stay in their houses and before they were told that their eyes was their jihad the ship of life proceeded with her in a wave that was like mountain um ammara experienced great occurrences in her family that if these occurrences were to be brought upon huge mountains they would have turned them to a leveled plain or to flopped up wool but this woman in the depth of her heart 
as a result of the blessing of her companionship with the Prophet ﷺ, and his supplication for her was extremely strong and very much persevering. The Prophet choice fell upon her son Habib as one of his two envoys to Musaylama, the lawyer of the clan of Banu Hanifa, who claimed prophethood. Habib was the hanger of her two sons from her first husband, Zayed ibn Hashim. He was handsome, gentle-hearted, strong in Iman, steadfast and truly dear to the heart of Umm Ammara. When he delivered the message and fulfilled the trust assigned to him, Musaylama asked him, Do you believe that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? He answered in the affirmative. Musaylama then said, Do you believe that I am a messenger of Allah? He said, I cannot hear. Musaylama ran into a ferry and commanded that Habib be tortured until he testified that he was a messenger of Allah. So his limbs were then cut piece by piece while he was tied up. He did not utter anything but the testimony to the oneness of Allah and the messengership of Muhammad He continued in this state and until he breathed his love and his soul ascended to his Creator and the sad news was brought to Umm Ammara. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, in the company of Abu Bakr and Umar came to her to console her on the great calamity concerning her son, the beloved Habib. It was at a time that the deep wound in her neck had deteriorated and her pain had become severe. She was in fact overwhelmed by calamity. But she bore all that with extraordinary perseverance. She owed that she would witness and take part in the killing of Musaylama, the liar, as she owed that she would not touch her body with water until she fulfilled the oath as a way of fulfilling the obligation she owed to Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, and as a way of avenging the death, the death of her son Habib. After the death of the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr and Umar would visit her to assure, console and honor her until the wars of apostasy and the battle of Yamamah took place. Inevitably, the Caliph Abu Bakr could not but agree to Umar Ammara's request to fulfill her oath. He allowed her to set out for the war with the Muslim army. Then Umm Ammara was already aging and she had become feeble. Though her head was already covered with grey hair, her heart was still exuberating with faith. The good word is like a pleasant tree whose root is firm and whose branch is in the sky. It gives out its fruits all the time with the permission of its Lord. How then can the tree be affected with weakness and dryness? How could Umm Ammara be affected with stagnation? It is one of the strange acts of destiny that Vaisi ibn Harb, who killed Hamza in the Battle of Uhud, was also the one who killed Musaylama and with the same Javili. While the battle was raging, Umm Ammara with her son Abdullah on her side were pushing their way into the rows of fighters looking for Musaylama in order to reach him and take revenge from him. In that battle, Umm Ammara sustained more than twelve wounds in different parts of her body, and she bled profusely. Her arm was cut off, starting from her already injured neck. In spite of that, she proceeded in pursuance of her goal without feeling any pain. She was directed to Musaylama, who was lying in the ground, wounded, while she javelin had penetrated deep into his body. Umm Ammara moved closer to him and started hitting him with a spear until he died. She then felt some sense of satisfaction and was a bit relieved. 
when she returned to Medina, she came to meet her appointed time. It was only a little after her return that she surrendered her soul peacefully, smilingly and willingly. And tomorrow she will meet her loved one, Muhammad and his companion, and she will be fortunate to be in his company. Dear reader, this is another aspect of the personality of Umm Ammara. It is an aspect that is not less important. She was a narrator of hadith who had an excellent memory. She narrated to us some hadith of the Messenger of Allah Therefore, the scholarly aspect of her life also has its place and importance. You will notice that some of her narrations contain fiqh and Islamic legal ruling. For example, At-Tirmidhi, An-Nasai and Ibn Maja reported in their Sunan on the authority of Umm Ammara that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, visited her and she presented him with food. The Prophet وسلم, told her, he, she said, I am fasting. The Prophet وسلم, then said, the Prophet وسلم, then said, if food is eaten in the house of a fasting person, the angels will invoke blessing on him. Abu Dawud also reported on the authority of Umm Ammar that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, wanted to perform ablution and a vessel that contained a one-third mud of water was brought to him. Ibn Manda also reported on the authority of Umm Ammar that she said, I was looking at the Messenger of Allah وسلم, while he was slaughtering a sacrificial camel with a spear in a standing position. Al Waqidi reported that Umm Ammara said, Men were shaking the hands of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in the night of the Pledge of Aqaba while Al Abbas, his uncle, was holding the Prophet's hand. When it remained only me and Umm Mani, my husband, Araba ibn Amr said, Messenger of Allah, these are two women who came with us to place their allegiance to you. The Prophet وسلم, said, I have accepted their place upon what I accepted your place on, for I do not shake women's hand. May Allah be pleased with Umm Ammara and please her. May he make paradise her abode and make her a model to be emulated by our mothers, sisters, wives and daughters.